This block might seem a little bit complicated, but it's not. There's just, it's the same thing that we just did. The only difference is that now you have to plug this in a little bit differently. So, on the stage input, on this guy right here, anything, this is the info that we want to change. So we want to change the info that's coming in from this assign material. That's just the barrel with the lid, right? And let's actually make a null over here so that we can organize this a little bit better. So I will say this is barrel with lid stage, okay? And then anything that goes within the purple block will be part of your variance. So starting with, let's say, this main stream here, we're going to have barrel with the lid as one of those variants right there. Hold down Alt, by the way, to make that little dot. So there we go. And then also over here with this prune, we now want this to be our other variant. Plug that in, get rid of this connection, and this is the setup that we want. Now, if we go to this bottom end block here, it's the same exact stuff that you've seen before. This primitive path, that's the same as what you saw before. That's going to be our barrel geo. For the variant primitive, leave that alone. And now we can just say, okay, this is going to be our barrel with lid. And then this will be barrel without lid. Okay, and then if we do a set variant, we now have the same options. By the way, this variant set, let's call this our barrels sets right there. Now we can say barrel set and we have our variants just like before. But now if we right click and we go lop actions, inspect active layer, look at this. We have way less code that we need to manage. So this is a much more efficient way of building up a variant. Long story short, if you have a basic prop, just use the create variant from existing primitive like you just saw me do. There's one last thing that I want to show you to wrap up this part one tutorial, and that is how to save out the actual USD file. The idea is that at the end of the day, we want one USD file to represent everything we just did. So let's set our main default barrel here to be barrel with lid. And we can say null. Let's call this our barrel set. It's going to say this is everything about the barrel. If we now use a configure layer, we can specify where we're going to save out this information. So save path and default primitive. For the save path, we want to say dollar hip tutorial one geo. And let's call this barrel sets or we could say barrels, but yeah, we'll just say barrel set because I think that's a better way of, of saying it. It's basically both the variants that we just specified. The default primitive here is going to be our topmost barrel right here. And now if we use a USD ROP, this will allow us to actually save out the USD file with the output file. Let's now have a path. So geo and let's say this will be, or we'll say hip tutorial one forward slash geo, and this will be our barrel asset. So this is the, the highest uh, USD file that looks at everything else. Now, one last thing I want to point out here is under extra files, we have this error saving layers with implicit paths. And what that means is that if let's say we didn't specify a path for something in this tree. So like, you know how we've been saving these paths, right? All along the way, even up here, when we loaded stuff in, we have this layer save path. If there's something that isn't saved with a path like this, it's going to give you an error message and it's not going to actually render it out. Also, while you're here, double check that you actually have a correct path for everything that needs it. So the lid, this guy, 
is called barrel lid. You don't want any duplicate names. This is called barrel base. If we go down here to the whole uh, barrel set, we said that right there. And now we can render this out. And don't forget to say dot USD. Also, I forgot to go up here under configure layer and specify a safe path for our materials. So let's say dollar hip tutorial one geo and we will say barrel mat. There we go. And I think, yeah, we need to say dot USD here as well. Dot USD. Dot USD. Now we should have everything we need to successfully save. That's good. It did not error. So now to read this, you might think to use a file. And um, yeah, and that would be what you might think. Actually, most of the time you probably want to use reference. It goes back to that whole, you know, sublayering thing. You hear this load as reference, whether or not you want a sublayer or a payload. Uh, yeah, long story short, just <laughs> use reference, go down here, reference file, and we finally have barrel assets, USD. We have that going on. Now if we go here and we say forward slash barrel. Okay, it looks like I also forgot to say barrel set dot USD right there. So, yeah, that's apparently something that I <laughs> do a little bit too much. Save to disk, and then it's good to create an, a brand new reference node because it kind of bugs out. If we go to reference file, we say barrel asset right there. We finally have a barrel. And now we can just say primitive path barrel, and look at that. We have everything load in over here like so. So there you go. That... <laughs> That's a very long-winded way of caching out a barrel. But the cool thing is that in a pipeline, this stuff is pretty powerful. Um, once you see what you can do with this, especially with instancing and all these different variants within a pipeline, it's pretty cool. And most likely, if you're at a big studio, a lot of these steps are probably already taken care of for you by a pipeline TD. So... Keep that in mind, even though this is really complicated, a lot of this stuff is, is done automatically if you're at a studio. And now that you at least have a general idea of how this works, it's kind of nice because now you can more easily troubleshoot stuff if things are going wrong. In the next video, let's talk about instancing.